And that ties into campaign finance. This is from your website. Yeah. It says, a yeah. campaign finance system in this country is broken due to the Supreme Court's disastrous decision in Citizens United versus Federal Election Commission. So talk about this. Well, you know, you're not taking big money. You're not taking, no. PAC, you know, super PAC money. So uh, where do you stand on this and how would you resolve this issue if elected? Well, I really think this is at the root of what's wrong with our democracy and why we're losing our democracy, uh, the ability of these uh, interests, these special interests to buy off Congress people. I was telling my staff today a story about uh, these, uh, you know, the trains that uh, there was a case in Washington state about six weeks ago where a train was going about 80 miles an hour when it should have been going 30 its yes. first time. And uh, how many people died there? You know, they actually wrote a law in 2008 to put in place the uh, auto brake system by 2015 to make that mandatory. And the lobbyists came forth, uh, I saw this in the nation, the lobbyists uh, lobbied at a rate of $300 million. They put $24 million directly into the pockets of Congress people, and they got the implementation of that law changed to 2020. So now everybody that's dying between 2015 and 2020 because of these trains going out of control and not having the auto brake system kick in, uh, all those are unnecessary deaths, you know, and you might argue that there's blood on the hands of those who argue to delay the implementation of it. And, and you know, that's just one of, God, how, how many tens of thousands of examples of all that we see wrong in this country is because of the ability to buy off Congress people. You know, this addiction to fossil fuels, uh, the inability to put in place a single payer healthcare system that every other developed country understands is necessary. Um, you know, the list goes on and on. And until we put in place meaningful campaign finance reform, and you know, and to be honest, my slide, I think misstates it. It was a problem even before Citizens United and Citizens Great. United just sort of threw more gasoline upon the fire. And uh, I, I believe that we need a constitutional amendment to that declares that once and for all, uh, corporations are not people and money is not speech. Uh, to do away with any arguments that support Citizens United. So I've signed one of those pledges that say I'll move to uh, work toward a constitutional amendment along those lines. And this is really uh, just, it's the it's at the root of all our problems and it runs through the fabric of all the problems that we face. And uh, until we deal with that, I, it's hard to imagine that uh, many, if not all of these problems will will ever go away. Well said. I, I, I agree with that. And thank you for making that statement. I'd, I'd love to know if Amtrak was one of the people that lobbied. I, yeah, it, it said the rail industry. The rail industry mm -hmm. has lobbied $314 million worth, with $24 million in, directly into the pockets of Congress people. I wonder which cost them more, that or the deaths, in terms of yeah. marketing, you know? They, they, uh, they, probably measure, they probably measure that, John, and uh, make some, some cold-blooded calculated decision. They do, and you know, you and I both know that they've done that with healthcare. They, you know, uh, we have a, a volunteer member of this program who died because an insurance company decided that at fifty-two he wasn't worth a kidney, uh, right? And you see that. I, I see it all day, every day. I, I mean, that, and that's one of the, to me, one of the virtues of my campaign and my candidacy is that I can tell those stories, time after time, story after story. I had a patient about four weeks ago, a sixty-year-old hardworking guy who. Uh, had belly pain, and he actually has insurance, but it's insurance that has a $500 copay uh, if he should go to the emergency department. And like 42% of Americans, he lives paycheck to paycheck. Right. And so $500 is a lot of money to this guy. And he had belly pain, and he put it off. He put it off for about 18 hours. His doctor told him to go to the ER. He kept waiting. And by the time he showed up in my emergency department, his appendix had perforated, and he had sepsis, you know, bacteria, bacteria growing throughout his bloodstream and was just about dead. And, uh, you know, and he's just one of hundreds of stories that I talk about on a regular basis. It, there, there is no more heartless healthcare system than the one that we've got here in America. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, yeah, if we're going to talk about a number one, we've got the, pretty much the worst in, in healthcare. It's, it's pretty, pretty yeah. bad. Um, and I know it's, I can't imagine dealing with that every day. Uh, it's it's what dri it drives me, John. You know, uh, if there's yeah. times where I think I'm too tired, like going to that women's march after a 24-hour shift, you know, it's you see these stories and it motivates you to say, no, God damn it, we can't keep putting up with this.